What's up everybody, Main Fly Guys here with a, another tutorial. Um, to start here I need eyes and this is 20 pound mono. All I do is grab a little tiny bit. You'll kind of get, I mean this is, I don't know, half an inch long, maybe even smaller than that. And I just take a little bit of a lighter and I just slowly burn it and you'll see a little eye starts to form. And I'm going to do that to both sides. How wide should the gap be? It should be really small. So, you know, if you can look there, you'll kind of get the feel for it. Um, but they harden up really, really quick and they're really, really small, so be careful with them. This is a size 14 hook. It's a little bit bigger than I like to use. Um, I, I usually fish this pattern in a size 16, but, <clears throat> And I'm not joking when I say that this is really the only pattern you need in Maine from like, I don't know, from June to not even, I mean late May to oops, late May to, to the end of trout season, like whenever the end of trout season is. So um, I tie these eyes in about, oh, one eye length back. So you have one eye length back. If you want to color them, feel free. You know, I usually color them black. Um, let me just get this one up a little bit. I usually color them in black uh, at the end, you'll see at the end here. So now I'll travel down. Um, we're gonna have a gold wire ribbing. This is medium and it's just gold. So I will tie that in on the side and I work down pretty far into the bend because this is a pupa so I work pretty far into the bend I mostly go with this dark olivey color olivey olivey what a ridiculous word olive color um, it's my favorite and seems to be the most successful you can obviously change up colors I have bright green ones and I kinda have brown ones but this dark olive seems to be the best so I'll just slowly make my way up. Since it's a pupa, I don't really want it to be super, super clean. Um, I want it to be kind of messy because it's an emerger, you know, and typically emergers are not clean. The only thing is that it should get a little bit fatter as it goes up. So there should be a decent taper. Um, so if you're gonna focus on something, focus on that. And that's pretty good. Um, you're going to want to leave another eye length behind the eyes there. You're going to want to leave um, that space because we're going to be doing a lot of work in there. So then I'll just take my wire wrap and I like to do four wraps. I like to do four wraps if I can. Great, there's my fourth one. There's my fourth one. I'll tie my wire in really quickly and helicopter that off. All right, so here's what I got so far. Looking pretty smooth, nothing too crazy. Now things are gonna get a little on the crazy side. I'm gonna take about eight fibers from a pheasant tail. I'm gonna take about eight fibers um, I like to go from the bottom where they're a little thicker. And I'm going to take eight. This is going to create sort of the back. Obviously, if you take seven, you're going to be okay. But you'll notice that they curve up, or they have a curve to them. I want that them to be tied in with the curve up. And I also want to keep the tips, um, I want it to go about the length of the hook past the eye of the hook. So I measure out, okay, so I want right here to be at about the eye of the hook, all right? So I just kinda do one gentle 
trap and they'll all kind of flail out or stay tight or whatever but and I'll work back to my body I want it to be nice and tight with my body okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select two fibers just two so these two are nice in the front and I'm going to tie them right up front keeping them on top right to the eye of the hook okay good so just like that is good I'm going to trap these ones that I don't want and I'm just going to cut them all right these are going to become our antenna later on down the road all right so from now from here I like to use and I only use squirrel from the fall. This might be getting a little too technical, but you know, technicality makes great flies. So here is squirrel dubbing. It's just natural red main squirrel. Um, the fall is much fluffier and much buggier. And we're gonna take one wrap one solid wrap, all right? You see how buggy, it just like instantly gets buggy. In the spring, <clears throat> they don't get that buggy. They're, um, they're more stringy in the spring and summer. So the fall is where it's at, even like dead of winter, if you wanna go hunt some red squirrel. All right, so there should still be some room behind your eye. You see how we're just, just a smidge behind it. And you're gonna need two feathers. Here is a grouse back feather, and what I do is I take two of them, line them up, like so, and then I'm just going to grab the tips of them and kind of separate out fibers. Okay? So I have just these little pieces. I kind of snap those off on accident. I guess you don't really need to. I um, guess I'll show you what it looks like with the whole feather. Um, it doesn't matter, it's just a little easier to grab onto. So again, you're just gonna separate out some fibers. Boom. All right, so you should have something that looks like this. All right. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the, the feather portion, that portion that you separated, it's gonna point forward. You're gonna trap the stem just once. You're gonna trap the stem just once and you're gonna pull it down at an angle so that where the fibers start, you pull it about halfway down the length of the fly, of, the, of that olive body that you tied in. Once you get it about halfway down, you can trim your excess and you guys will get a better view of this on the other side and then I'm going to come in and just lock those fibers in alright so I will show you on this side it'll be much much clearer for you so I'm going to trap this feather in alright got that feather I'm going to pull it down so it goes to about half the length of the body Oops. let me redo that there we go. So I'm gonna pull it down diagonally and you see that little wing forming right there. There it is. So I'm gonna cinch that. That wing is like one of the essential pieces, I'm sure of it. Because if you've ever taken up a caddis pupa, you'll see how obvious that wing casing is. And you can just trim it. So there, you see how, I mean, you see how prominent those are, right? This, let me get my poker. I think it's a crucial part of this fly is that wing right there. Absolutely crucial. I think that that piece is crucial. Um, so now, I'm going to get some more squirrel. I've misplaced, eh, whatever. 
you don't want to bulk up the head too much because you've kind of got a lot going on. So you don't need a lot of dubbing to make it look buggy. But, you know, you want to make it look a little buggy. All right, so you see we're just kind of continuing that bugginess. And, oh, there it is. I'm not using any, um, I'm not using any wax or anything because I want, I don't want this to become like a rope. I want it to be buggy. I want it to be messy. All right, so now that I've got all that, I'm gonna pull that pheasant tail forward. You see it makes a nice case on the top. I'm gonna pull it forward. And I'm gonna trap it right behind the eye. All right. And then I'm gonna pull those fibers back again and I'm gonna go in between them and the antenna. Just once. And I'm gonna cut them as close as possible. Now, I'm gonna pull the antenna back and I'm gonna trap them in right where I trapped in my casing, all right? Be careful, this is where it's very, very easy to crowd the eye. I'm only gonna do it once, and then I'm gonna come and whip finish out front. So I'm gonna whip finish out front. I'm gonna whip finish four times, because I don't wanna build up too bulky of a head, all right? Now is when you can come in and kind of do your cleanup if you want. There's a few things that you have to do now. So, you're, I mean, this fly is great. You could fish it just like this. I mean, this is fine. But there's a few things that I like to do. One is I put my scissors right underneath the pheasant tail antenna. And I just put a little bit of pressure on my finger. And you get that, what everyone is looking for. Oh, beautiful. Um, up front here, there's a few fibers that... I'll pluck out, you know, if you don't want them because they're pointing in the wrong direction, but whatever, you can kind of fix it up a little bit. Um, when you burn the mono, it kind of leaves a brownish color for the eye. If you would like to change that to something a little more, um, something that pops a little bit more, you can use a black Sharpie. Boom, so it looks like that. See, it just, just pops a little more, it's a little darker. Um, but there's your caddis pupa. And honestly, if you're fishing Maine, this is the only fly you need from like May, I don't know, May 30th to July 15th. Like you could get away with just this fly. And you would catch fish all day long, trout and salmon, of course. Um, so that is Greg's Caddis Pupa. I, I, I have no name for it. I just call it Greg's Caddis Pupa. So, but it's a super effective fly and has been um, catching fish for me. Very, very large fish and uh, high quantities of them. Again, I fish in size 16. This is a size 14 just for the video. It makes it a little easier to see. But um, but yeah, this, this fly has really been killer for me. So um, if you have any questions or you'd like to buy this fly or something, uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram, please follow us. Also, we just uh, launched our first podcast called In The Film. Search for Maine Fly Guys on any of your, you know, ordinary podcasts, Spotify, Apple, etc., and you can find us. Um, so please give us a listen. We talk about some pretty interesting stuff on there. Um, so yeah, so here's the fly. If you got any questions about it, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.